collected over the years that I'm not needing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna probably take them to the used bookstore. None of them, of course, are mead making books, but um, I came across the recipe book that I got the you know the unbelievably high number of spice recipe <laughs> from, and. Um, in fact, is that right? No, it's not that. It's right there. It's actually called A Witch's Brew. It was a uh, Llewellyn Books um, release that's actually out of print now, I think, because I went looking for it because I was going to buy like 100 copies and send them to all my friends who pick on me. And um, But uh, anyway, I'm gonna go, I was actually going to go pull it out and post the recipe and say, okay, guys, let's make this work. So what what variety of spices are in it? Oh my God! All of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> I mean, I kid you not. It's got everything from bay leaves to. I will track it down. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll do this. I promise you that I will. Cause it's. I know it's like. Cause I can see all the rest of my mead books are looking at me. I see sacred and herbal <laughs> healing healing beers and wild wines and. Um, oh, yeah, so it's right those. in there. Yeah, it, Act, the Acton and Duncan is in there. Um, you know, so um, all the other ones are there. So it's in that stack somewhere, but it's probably facing the other direction. And if I move, this whole stack will come down. So um, <laughs> I know this because that's what happens when you do this when you're on the radio live. But um, anyway, I'll track it down and I will post the recipe and then we can pick it apart and see if there's any way to save it because I don't know. It sounds like one of the recipes from, like, the medieval era. They like to put a lot of spices in there. <laughs> yeah, uh, it wasn't, though. It wasn't a historical. It was a, uh, it was a witch, it was for, like, a, 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 um, a Wiccan um, thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, now there's uh, my recipes from wineries. There's the complete mead maker. They're, they're all around me. I'm surrounded by mead making books. Uh, just not the one, one I want. First, one of my first mead making books was uh, by Pamela Spence. I have that. Mad about mead. Mad about mead. Yep. She, she's she had actually, on the show, didn't we? We did. She was like episode six or seven. So you might want to go listen to that. She's thinking about doing a new edition of it. We talked about it, and um, she's been bouncing some some ideas off of me and and getting some input. So she's talking to her publisher. I don't know where they're at with it right now, but I know that that's definitely on her radar so um would be way cool to have that that you would know. be cool if did, did another did another book yeah it really would be um so yeah i'm kind of hoping she does you know and i already told her i said you'll get all the free advertising you need from me so you know just <laughs> let me know we'll get you on the show again no problem you know how there's a picture of her on the back of the book uh-huh um and she's like sitting at a table and there's a drinking horn in front of her uh-huh well, my friend Bob Stein carved that drinking horn for her. Oh, <laughs> nice. fun! That is so. Talk about serendipity, man. That's hilarious. Yeah, you know, I remember she... buying the. I remember buying the book, and Bob goes, "Pamela Spence." He was like, "Oh, okay." He was like, "Yeah, I carved the horn for her." And then I look on the back of the book, and I was like, "Is this it?" And he's like, "Yep, that would be the one." Oh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, small world, man. That is That's so cool. hilarious. Yeah. yeah, she's she's really funky and cool. She's a uh, purple hair rainbow haired Jewish grandma. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, she's just amazing. She's still she's still freaky Friday and having fun and not caring, you know. She's she's the crazy. She's 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 like the crazy grandma lady. I love her to pieces and she's what I want to be when I grow up, man. She's amazing. So, yeah, I, I loved having her on the show. She was a hoot. Did, go back in the um, show archives. Um, go on Spreaker because you'll be able to get to the bottom a lot quicker. The, um, it's a little it's a little faster and trying to dig through it on Got Mead. But um, I, I want to say it was show six or seven, thereabouts. Yeah, it was definitely early on. Yeah, it was in like the first ten shows. But she was a lot of fun to talk to. And the funny thing is, is, you know, like Joe from Joe's Ancient Orange, she's kind of been out of it for a while. So we basically dragged her back into the mead world. And she, was, <laughs> she had a ball. I mean, she just loved it. So it was it was a hoot. And she's been emailing me since. And, in fact, i got to drop her another email going, well, what do you think if we did this? And, can you know, do you think people would buy it? And I'm like, totally. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really is. Well, look, I mean, um, we're gonna start getting into uh, the AJ segment, which is making good mead. Back to basics. You are so very welcome to stick around. We'd love to have you. Would you like to? Yeah, I'll stay on the phone. Fabulous. All right, so um, let me um, get. You gotta go find Manny and I gotta Ryan. go find Manny and Ryan. Yeah, so let me call them. Hopefully they're there. I gotta. 
I had to send out, I, for whatever reason, they didn't have the links to the show notes, so um, I had to go back and uh, resend them, so I don't know how prepared they're going to be, but we'll find out. Well, I talked to Ryan on Facebook the other day, so we've got, we at least have half a plan. Okay, well, calling uh, Manny right now, so let's get him. See if we can do it without booting me off this time. Well, I know, I don't know what the heck happened. <laughs> Suddenly it popped up and said, what did you think of the call? And I'm like, what did I think of what call? Yeah. You son of a... Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think of it. Yeah, there we go. get him. Manny? I don't know where it's ringing now. Ringing Manny's answering machine? It looks like it forwarded to another number. Wouldn't that be cool if he had a separate phone line for his, his metery? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it, I think it may have... Um, your call has been forwarded to, to an automated, automated voice message system. Yeah. Oh, no, we're just going to hang now up. Now everybody knows his number. Yeah, <laughs> right. I only, I only did uh, I only did part of it. All right, let's uh, let's call Ryan then. Um, and I'll just uh, poke Manny and, and see if he might have got caught up in something. 7320. Because, you know, life does happen. Yeah, right. Hello. Brian, you there? Yes, I am. Hey, how you doing? I don't know why it's giving that. Hang on a second. Zero eight is not available. Did I lose everybody? What the hell? Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Three zero two five three six seven zero eight five is not available. At the yeah, time hang on a second. I'm trying to get this one to go away. You may hang up or press one for more options. I don't know what the heck we'll is going that on out here. In, we'll edit that out in the in the good copy, right? <laughs> yeah, we will. Tr well, yeah, so, it's recording. I don't yeah. know what the heck is going on. Ryan, you there? Don't you just love modern technology? I'm telling yeah, you, Yeah, it makes man. life so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Hi. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. I don't know what happened. I called I called Manny and it like rolled voicemail and then I hung up on the voicemail and then it came back and then it hung up on everybody and then it came back and it was all voicemail. I was like, seriously? What the heck? No. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I'll have to text Manny and see. He what's loves the, us. I know, right? Just loves us. All right. So um everybody, uh we've got John. Talkington from Brimminghorn Meadery and, uh, well, currently from Dogfish Head, but also starting his meadery, Brimminghorn Meadery, and he's an experienced mead maker. You guys probably already know him. Um, Ryan, John, John, Ryan. Hi, John. John? Brimminghorn Meat Squatchy. Did I? John, you still there? <laughs> Crap. I think I lost John. <laughs> Kill John, too. Yeah, ah. So, yeah, I think that's what happened. I don't know what happened. Skype. But. Skype, you're being so stupid tonight. Oh, I know. Oh my God. Race and re-record. Press where three is to continue recording where you left off. Press four. I hang up on that. Let's get the three hundred two number. Because that's oh, what's that's, coming up. Yeah, that's uh, that's John. I don't know what's going on with that. All right, I will Facebook him. It looks like he's Facebooking me. 
Is that a noun or a verb? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Verbing yeah. weird language. Hang on. Go ahead and go ahead and pick up AJ and do do your thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get everybody back in here. So, uh, your show, dear. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So, um, last week we were talking about developing good habits. Uh, we talked a little bit about sanitation and about uh, note taking and uh, getting things set up before you actually start. Um, this week, we were going to plan to talk about ingredient quality, how to treat your yeast right, and hydrometers. Use it. So I guess we will start off with talking about ingredient quality. And um, you know what? There's a saying in the computer world, garbage in, garbage out. It's pretty appropriate to meat as well. I mean, honey's pretty good. You know, even not great honey is still going to make, you know, not bad JAO, but you know, if you're looking for a standalone uh, traditional, you're probably going to want to invest in some, you know, a, a decent honey. If it tastes really good, just as honey, it'll probably make a good mead. And uh, if you're going for adding fruits and stuff like that to it, you want to make sure that they're not past their best and that they are in fact ripe and not underripe, because otherwise you're not going to get the full benefit of the flavor. And you might end up uh, getting, you know, if they're overripe, you might end up with, you know, a little bit of oxidation going on. Or they may even be starting to ferment already, in which case you're going to have competing strains of yeast. Uh, Ryan, any comments on ingredient quality? No, I think you hit it right on the nail. Spend as much as you can afford to buy the best things you can, and you'll uh, be glad you did at the end. Yeah, no, I mean, that said, I've used Costco honey, and I've used grocery store honey, and it works just fine for JAO, and um, I go to an apiary that sells a lot of commercial honeys, um, and it actually, I don't get varietals from it, it's got a, a white honey, which is mostly clover, and a golden honey, which is mostly goldenrod, um, and I think it's just the season in which they harvest it, but it's, they also get honey from a lot of local beekeepers when they can't sell what they've got at the craft markets and stuff. Um, they'll, they'll buy it off of local beekeepers as well, so it's not, you know, pure anything, but it's still pretty decent quality honey. They don't, um, they don't pasteurize it, and they just, uh, they just filter most of the big bits out, and it's quite a good table honey, and it also makes pretty decent mead. Um, I've, three times now I've made a traditional using their um, golden honey and their uh, a little tiny bit of their um, uh, buckwheat honey and uh, you know that that works just fine but you know getting my hands on some more interesting things like some um, you know really cool wildflower honeys from other areas or um, my personal holy grail is orange blossom I've completely fallen in love with that take a guess what doesn't grow in Canada all right well okay I'm sure I'm building up some credit at um, B folks so let me check with Lori and see if I can get some sent your way <laughs> um, I'm not sure how we'll manage it. I may have to have one of my friends smuggle it across the border. But uh, what I can probably do is maybe get um, the folks at um, at uh, Monroe to nip across the border and pick it up. If I can get it up to Port Huron zone. And then they'll pick it up and bring it back across to Ontario. And then you can nip down there and get it. <laughs> so Well, either I've actually got a load of um, mead that I need to arrange to pick up from... Um, um, Acuac on Got Mead uh, for the oh, group okay. brew, the chocolate right. group brew. So I've got a friend who's got a UPS box in, um, what is it, Potsdam? Mm, okay. One of the one of the little border stations. They've got a they've got a mailbox that I'm planning to use. That I just haven't actually gotten my butt in gear and gotten all the information to all the relevant people yet. Oh, okay. Well, we might be able to manage so. that. Um, I'm going to try Manny mm. again right now. So. Let's let's see. Okay. You know, cross your fingers and you know, pray. I'm just gonna drink some mead. Yeah. Uh, vagaries of things. <laughs> I think I got my finger on the button to cut this one off if it goes sideways. <laughs> I'm just gonna pour some more maple mead. Haha. <laughs> on glass number three. So let me know if you need to cut me off. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Manny, you there? All right. Um, yep. Yay! Finally, it works. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Manny, um, we've already got Ryan and, of course, me and AJ, and uh, we've got John Talkington 
Um, so you've probably run into him a time or two online.